Hi, it's Lisa returning with my next video. Today I'm going to be making a nice quick card using the teapot stamp ESC14, the stencil PS108 and the mini stamp JM12 with the leaves. I will be using Paper Artsy Paints. The colours that I'll be using are Snowflake, Bubblegum, Slime, Turquoise and I'll be using the Crackle Glaze on the teapot. Okay, my first step that I'm going to do at the moment, I'm just going to place my cardstock onto my stamping platform and I'm going to mark a little star so I know that this is the correct way for me to put that piece of paper in when I re-stamp it. So I've positioned my piece of paper in so it can't go any further. I've placed my stamp on my um, plastic side of the platform. I'm going to ink it up with archival ink. Now this step, I don't, don't mind if it doesn't stamp out real dark because I will be re-stamping over it. So it's just got a nice image. Take that away. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my turquoise paint, place a bit on the mixed media mat. I'm then going to get my sponge, which is spongy on one side and it's firmer on the other side. So with a um, white sponge, I'm just going to tap it in, just going in one direction. I'm placing that paint over the teapot. Okay, my next step is I'm going to get the crackle glaze. Now you normally would wait for this to dry in between layers, but because I'm working on it pretty quick, um, I have sort of prepared another part so you're not having to see it dry. So I'm just going to put the crackle glaze straight over the top. Just with a brush, I'm going to place that all over the teapot. Now you can heat dry this with your heat gun or you can just leave it aside to dry by itself. This one here I've actually prepared earlier and it is nice and dry. The next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the snowflake on it. So I'm just going to clean my brush. And with a snowflake, once again, just place it onto your mat or your glass mat. In the one direction, I'm just quickly going over with that white paint. You don't want to brush up and down too much because it starts to crackle no sooner you put it on there. So I'm going to leave that and put that aside to dry. My next step is I've cut down a piece of white cardstock at 13 centimetres by 13 centimetres. With my stencil, I'm going to place my stencil on top of my cardstock. And I'm going to sort of position it nice and evenly. Once that's in place, I'm then going to place those magnets on top of the stencil. I'm going to use a makeup sponge, like a triangle makeup sponge. Now I may need a little bit more paint. And I'm just going to tap that paint in and then tap it off. I don't want too much paint on this sponge. I'm still going to hold the stencil in position. Even though the magnetics are holding it there, sometimes it can move a little bit. So I do still like to hold on to it. So just tapping all over that image. You don't want to squeeze it in too much because it will seep underneath your stencil. So it's just making sure you get into all the little creases. When you're happy with what colour you've put on, remove your magnets and then your colour is put onto your white cardstock. The next step I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a black line around the outside of the cardstock just using a black pen. 
And I'm just going to stop and start with the line. So I'm going to start drawing and then stopping and just leaving a little bit of a space in between. Just gives it a little bit more interest looking at your border. So going around all four sides. Now once again, if it's easier, pop on a magnet to hold that into position. But I have got my hand down firmly as well. And it's always making sure that your paint is dry before you start doing the border. Okay, so I've got those four sides ruled up. My next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to colour some cardstock. So I'm going to colour a blue, a green and a pink. So with the blue, once again, just going in one direction and I'm just sponging all that colour over with the blue. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to be using slimed. So just tap that into the sponge. And just one direction, placing that, so we're colouring that cardstock. The next one is bubble gum. So it's just a good quick way of colouring your cardstock. So with the pink, Now you can go over those a bit darker if you like and let it dry more before you stamp. That's fine to do that. The next thing I'm going to do with my acrylic block, I'm going to place my flowers, ink those stamps up. And press nice and firmly for your image. The next one I'm going to do is a green leaves. And then the next one that I'm going to do is the butterfly. So I'm going to stamp that butterfly three times onto the blue. So make sure it's nice and inked up. Okay. I have pre-cut these flowers and leaves and the butterflies. So once you've got those all stamped out, you can go ahead and cut. So once again, before I put my butterflies away, I'm just going to, the ones that I've already cut out, I'm just going to add a bit of white highlight. Now this is a um, Signo pen. You can also use a white Posca pen. So it's just basically giving you a nice little highlight on the wings of the butterfly. And I'll lift that up to show you um, so you can see that a lot easier. You can put glitter on the wings if you like. Or you can paint the wings different colours if you wish. So just by putting the white on it, just highlights those butterflies a little bit more. Okay, so getting back to the card, our crackle paste is starting to crackle. I'm just going to leave it for a fraction longer before we go and cut that out and re-stamp it. With your card, I have got the words a spoonful of sugar. Now making sure always before you stamp your wording, make sure it is going the correct way. So I always tend to test it to make sure that it's not upside down. So I'm going to lift that so that is the correct way. Okay, so just placing that to the side of the card. I'm 
going to start putting the card together. So I've cut a 14 by 28 centimetre white card. I've cut a 13 and a half in the black. And the 13 is the one that we've stamped, like put our stamp and our stencil on. So we're just going to place the cardstock. You can use double sided tape, you can use glue. I'm going to stick that onto the card, leaving a nice white border. You will then leave a nice black border. Okay. What I've done, I've pre-cut the flowers and I've pre-cut the leaves and I have done the butterflies. So with the flowers, I would just tend to give them a bit of a mould with your fingers. The cardstock that I've used is a Paper Artsy Heavyweight cardstock. I do like this for shapes because then I find that it does hold its shape a lot nicer. So with the butterflies, I'm just pinching in between the butterfly just so that it is lifting up. Or the wings are lifting up, I should say, sorry. Okay. This should be dry by now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that back into my stamping platform. So once again, I've marked the, well, I should have marked a spot up here. I know which way it is going, but it's always handy to mark that little pencil mark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to butt that up again. I'm going to re-ink my stamp. And bring that down straight onto that image that I've covered over. So you can see that crackle coming through. I'm going to cut around the teapot. Put my glasses on. So just carefully going right around the teapot, trying not to touch the black ink because it probably is a little bit damp. Um, I would tend to dry in between like stamping and cutting, but because I'm putting it onto a video, I have sort of no choice apart from sort of cutting it out straight away. So what I tend to do, even with a piece of paper, just place it over the image just so that I'm not going to get ink onto my fingers and then transferring it onto our nice stamped um, teapot. So it's just constantly moving it around and keeping your fingers off that ink. Now this crackle glaze does look nice on um, tags. It's always probably putting a dark color on your first layer so that when the crackle does come through, it's showing that dark colour at the bottom. I'm nearly there with it. Okay, I'm going to cheat with this one here. I'm just going to cut up the side of it so I can cut on the inside of the handle. Normally I would use a craft knife. And then we can glue that back together once it's placed down onto the cardstock. So as I said before, this cardstock is nice and firm, so I can shape it a fraction. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bend that just so that it is actually getting a bit of a curve to it. 
with my foam dots I tend to use a lot of these I'm going to run a strip in the middle of the teapot I'm going to take the backing off and then I'm going to place another strip straight on top Now you can, with your glue, just add a little bit onto the handle and the spout to keep that in position. I'm going to place that onto my card. And just put the handle back into position. With the flowers, what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a couple of dots underneath the flower and this is a large flower I'm going to put another two dots on top and then I'm going to place the leaves on so just a bit of glue and position your leaves to where you're wanting them to go to so I've got the large one down the bottom I've got the smaller two at the top And those backing of the foam dots can come off and I've placed that to the side of the teapot the next one I'm going to do is a small flower so just one foam dot and I'm going to overlay that onto the large flower now the butterfly I'm going to get a foam dot folded in half I'm going to put it on one side of the butterfly a foam dot fold it in half and I'm going to put it onto the opposite side of the other butterfly so with the glue on the wing that hasn't got the foam dot so I've basically got those butterflies coming out of the teapot and then I'm just going to place another foam dot folded in half onto one side of the wing only and I'm going to stick that on to the flower so you can see that there is a bit of dimension in those butterflies I don't know if you can see that okay right my next step that I'm going to do I'm just going to get some diamantes to finish the card off so I'm going to cut two diamantes together place it in the middle of the butterfly or butterflies and then I'm just going to place the dots or the diamantes in the middle of the flowers just using my scissors as a bit of a tool to place those diamantes onto the card unless they flick off and you can put them on with your fingers I just find that my fingers get into the way okay so basically we have finished I have finished the card so it's just a nice little simple card just showing you how to use a crackle glaze and I do hope you have enjoyed this card today thank you